three, two, one. What's going on, everyone? You're watching Ash on Comics. My name is Ash. And, uh, oh, look at here. Today's comic, Event Leviathan, or Leviathan, however you want to pronounce it. Issue one of a six-issue mystery thriller. The greatest detectives hunt our greatest threat. Darth Vader. Wait, huh? That's... Sometimes I feel like it's it's cool. I like I like scary masks on villains. I you know, who doesn't like Darth Vader, right? But I think it's just kind of funny like how cliche this is, like especially with a character who's trying to present themselves as like the savior. One of the interesting things I like about Leviathan, the the guy Leviathan, which is really confusing to have the organization Leviathan and then this guy is calling himself Leviathan is that like, oh, he's presenting himself as kind of a good guy. Um, he's presenting himself as like, look, the heroes don't work. He's actually talked to some of them and been like, you know, join my way, we're gonna do things right. He's not presenting himself as the diabolical evil villain. Of course he is, but when you present yourself that way as the good guy, it works more for me when you're like Lex Luthor. Um, when Lex Luthor, you know, he's like the businessman, like, ah, oh, you know, or the kingpin, right? It's like, look at me, I'm, I'm one, I'm the good guy. You know, it's the heroes that are the bad guys. And look at how honest I, like, when you dress like this, you're freaking evil, dude. Like, it's just, uh, I'm, <laughs> I don't know. It, I like this trope, but use this for characters who are like, like Dr. Doom. Dr. Doom's like, I want to conquer the world. I make no, you know, I, I don't pretend that I'm some good guy. They, I don't know. Anyways. So here we start off with uh, Alex Maleev. Is that his name? Yeah, Alex Maleev's art. And I like his art, and I don't like it at the same time. Um, I think it's very muddy at times. Like, look at here. It's just, what's going on here? What's... Sometimes it works for Batman. I don't feel it's very comic book-y either. I feel like... And Bendis has like his whole stable of artists that are like what I call Jinx World's art artists. The guys that that draw very like indie style. They try to draw very realistic. Um, like if you've ever like read any graphic novels that aren't comics... Like, um, what was that Will, uh, Tom Hanks movie? Road to Perdition, you know, um, or um, was it the Eastern Promises, something Promises that they made into a movie? Anyways, there's like these graphic novels are actually it kind of surprised me when I discovered this. Like outside of comics, there's a whole industry of graphic novels by just like novelists and people who aren't really comic people. Anyways, Bendis feels like he's more into that, which might explain why he gets comics so bad all the time. Because he's always trying to do these real, realistic detective noir, and he's getting these artists that don't really draw like comics. They just, they're more, they're trying to draw like straightforward illustration. This, anyways, I'm, I, I babble on and on. This front page really kind of bothered me. He's like, oh, is he Batman? scaling something okay and he's breaking in but this paneling sequence is is confusing and it's unnecessary you don't this is like when the artist is trying too hard to be like look at my cool layouts no paneling is not layouts layouts proper layouts is how you structure the story visually um through 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 your drawing and laying those drawings out so that the mind's eye, as I'm reading, I go from this panel to this panel, my mind fills in the blanks. And it starts working the way a cinematographer would when they're moving the camera, changing directions, cutting to you know, a different angle. Um, that's how an artist should be doing when they're illustrating the book. This is kind of confusing. He's climbing. This is pretty basic. He's breaking in. Where am I supposed to go from here? Okay, I guess I go over to here. Now I'm... I just... 
where's there's no connection I, now Batman's just standing here now where do I go from here I guess I go normally it's like you go but I can't because of this long panel so you do go here 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 down to here now where do I go normally it's always to the right but something makes me also wait go what maybe I'm supposed to go down here no, I'm supposed to go over here because there's a panel to the right of it. So I guess here, here. Oh shit, now where do I go? Do I go all the way over here or do I now go left and snake around? I shouldn't be thinking about this. It should be natural. It should be effortless. I shouldn't have to stop and be cognitive about, wait a second, okay. Um, uh, you're breaking my immersion. This is terrible layouts. Um, and it's all for just to show Batman climbing somewhere, breaking in, shining a light on things and saying, how did you get here to someone <laughs> like this is way too complex. This is, this feels to me very pretentious. And, um, I think it's a combination of Bendis doing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine panels to have Batman show Batman's scaling, you know, breaking in somewhere and shining a light on something like, and then also Maliev laid out these panels, like not off to a good start. And then I really don't like these two page panel spreads because the staple appears right here, which not really the staple, but you know, the, the fold of the page, because we're not in the middle of the book. So the fold of the page, this panel hits the fold and it keeps going. You should only do this, like sometimes you need like a really big shot like this that'll work. But for these lower panels, this line right here should be scooted over. And these three panels should be on this page. And these three panels would be on that page. It, again, this is someone not really understanding comics. Um, <laughs> this shot here, this bugged me when I was reading it. This Lois Lane, first of all, why has Lois Lane got a gun on Batman? But she's pointing the gun. The angle should be from where Lois Lane is to Batman should be like this. If you can see, maybe if I pull back, you can see like the angle should be like this. But the way she's holding the gun, it's like this. Like she's shooting like way off to the, like, like some, is there someone back over here that she's aiming at? It, that's, that's a ticky tacky complaint. But you're a professional artist writing a premier DC event like that. That really just drew me off when I was reading it. So Batman shows up, sees Lois Lane, and he's like, you know, how did you get in here? Same way you did, Batman. I snuck in. Did he who give you did he who gave you that Kryptonian weapon drop you here? I got in here myself. No offense meant it's a rational deduction. She just stares at him, still pointing. Krypton gun. What the, why does Superman have a Kryptonian gun? Where did this... So Superman has like an arsenal of weapons now and he's usually like armed to Lois here or have this super gun. <laughs> okay. You're right. Hi. How are you? I'm Batman. It's always weird to see... Sorry. It's hard to read when I'm like trying to look around the camera. It's always weird to be anywhere with you without him, not me. It's a wardrobe thing. Also, where we are. He had urgent family business elsewhere in the galaxy, or, of course, he would be here. So, essentially, the first time in Bendis' being at DC, continuities mattered. Like, even in Superman's own books, Superman's in the Phantom Zone in one book, in the other book, he's fighting fires. Like, it's never mattered what's going on with Superman. Like right now in Superman, Superman's off in space doing fighting roles are or something stupid. So yes, that makes sense, but it's never mattered until all of a sudden now. Uh, basically, Bendis wants to write a Batman story and he doesn't want Superman to be in the picture and this is a lazy excuse or not lazy, it's a convenient excuse. But I'll, I'll accept it because that's the way things should be. Um, he's quite hot under the collar about all this. I know he is always where he's most needed. 
and I know you, and I know why you're here. I heard about your father. Cut the crap. Where is she? Where is Talia Al Ghul? Where is Cobra? Event Leviathan. I think they redacted the event incorrectly. <laughs> I think that's a coloring mistake. It looks like up here, it looks like it's supposed to be like a bunch of text. And in the middle of that text, Event Leviathan appears. And I think that's, and I was like, that's a really cool way of like where the, because I was like, what, what the fuck does Event Leviathan mean? But if it was like a bunch of text and there was like da 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 event da 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 Leviathan da 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 you know, and then everything was redacted but event Leviathan, and we go, oh okay, that's where that comes from. But they redacted the event, so I don't know what they're doing. So Lois Lane tells her little thing: the Leviathan has already destroyed all the corners of our world intelligence community in one day long destructive swoop all over the world. Argus, the EO, Spiral, Cadmus, gone. Everyone who ever worked there or for them is gone. The buildings, the people destroyed without a trace, like they never existed. At the same time, Leviathan went after Amanda Waller, who runs Task Force X and Argus. They came after her at work and at her home. Her, Amanda Waller, in her home. And they left my father, Argus's Sam Lane, to die in the same attacks. When he gets up, they're in a lot of trouble. But at the same time, they kidnap Clark Kent, my husband, in some sort of botched internal struggle between Talia and whomever Leviathan is now. This little box right here that I just read. Oh, sorry. And they let him go to tell the world the story. These three boxes, this is the Superman Leviathan Rising special that cost you $10. <laughs> if you want to know what happened in that special, you can watch my review. Or you can just read these three boxes and save yourself 10 bucks. <laughs> Everywhere we turn, more suspects and clues. Waller is missing. My dad lies near death. Oh, man, I'm getting bored. I can't help but feel that right here, right now, this is what it feels like. This is what change feels like. It feels like. It feels like. You're in a great deal of trouble, Miss Lane. I thought she was going to say Trump. Am I right? Am I right? It feels like. Never mind. It's a bad joke. You're in a great deal of trouble, Miss Lane. First Leviathan almost kidnaps Clark Kent. Then they do get a jump on your super spy warrior of a father. Have you been approached? No, but I did the math already. Even if this is Luther, a Luther t super villain team up, this seems a scosh bigger than a grudge against my family. I agree. I meant the pieces need to fit. I do not think Talia al Ghul is working alone. Luther was my first go, go to as well, but, and then it's like blah, 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 blah. They're talking, trying to piece out thing. And, and honestly, this feels pretty decent. It feels like it feels like a crime scene investigation show, right? Um, I'm not really a big fan of those shows just by their nature, but uh, so they come across Trevor and it's like, you two haven't shut up since you waltzed in here and they got this... They go on this thing now about with him, like who who done it, who done it could be this, but he did that, and um, he tells him like what happened, and um, he's like, do you know where you are, Co City? Yes, thank you, but do you know what this building was? The public was told it was under construction, museum, super science, but you're here, so blah blah. And like this was forty two minutes ago. This is the Odyssey. This is a new day and a new dawn for Argus. And I must say, sir, I refuse your request to leave. So we get this woman, Dr. Strand, and he, Trevor's just like, you need to get the fuck out of here. Like, I'm not here to shut you down. I'm trying to protect you. And she's just, you know, just adamant, stubborn woman. Just, uh, what are you talking about? I don't know. She's like, <laughs> uh, and he, she won't go. And she keeps asking all these questions. And he's like, look, fucking DEO's gone. Like, Everyone needs to go. You're, you're, we're all going to die. Get the hell out of here. What? what? Tell me what happened. It's like, shut up, bitch. Let's go. Um, and then she's like, well, this is why the Odyssey needs to exist. It's She's total, like, it's like a it's like a social media outreach for, like, heroes and the people. And it's very SJW-ish. The comic itself is not. It's just her thing. And it, she, she because of that, she kind of really annoyed me. Um, so... Then all of a sudden, the bad robot shows up. Uh, you need to leave. 
I don't think he's going to listen. And look at her, this, oh my God. Yeah, you should have listened, bitch. I'm talking to you, doctor. Run the other way. Grab everyone you can. Do you know who this is? Colonel? And he gets put in this bubble. Colonel, he's like, go, go now. It's some kind of protective field. You have to run. I can't, is there some kind of opening or you have to run now? Omit, stupid bitch. <laughs> like, <laughs> she just stands there like, and, and then all of a sudden everything's just wiped. And he's, you know, oh my God, and she's annihilated. And then this is a really cool shot. The whole building. But boom! Remember what it looked like? Let's go back. Boom! I was like, oh, damn. Okay, that's a cool shot. And there's the wreckage. Pretty cool shot. Steve Trevor is still alive because he was put in this protective bubble. Who knows why? Um, so they're talking about, it wasn't Talia. It was someone else. Was it Luther? Fourth World? Not the Joker. My husband said there was someone else with Talia at his kidnapping. He never saw his face. He said Talia wasn't her usual self as well, whatever that is. Um, so they talk about if you the event Leviathan, like I said, they let him go so he could spread the message. They eventually come to the realization after talking a lot that, you know, because first he's like, you know, I'm Leviathan. I must be because, you know, not that he really believes it, but he's trying to confess like, he's made to look like a Leviathan because he's the only one that survived. He can't prove is it, you know? And then it's like, well, but Lois is Leviathan because of this. And then they kind of all determine that it's all meant to be this sort of like who's who point fingers. Like you, it's you, it's you. And so, so all this dis distrust um, to the point where Steve Trevor pulls out a gun and shoots Lois Lane. He's like, they're just talking about it. He's like, I do not think she has anything to do with this. This may have happened to her. And he's talking about Talia Al Ghul. Her dad, her family, I've studied the whole life. They're deceitful liars who will do anything and say anything to protect their own. So I'm not buying any of this. Bam, just shoots Lois Lane. What the? And then, ah, he gets zodded. And at first I was like, did Batman zod him? And you see this arrow. And it's like, oh, Green Arrow just shows up. Taser arrow, stay down, Steve, and oh, don't touch him for three minutes. Why, why do you? Why does Bendis always got to put the little quippy line at the end of everything? Hit him again. No green arrow. He's not a suspect. Um. So he's yelling at Steve. He's like, "This happened on your watch, Steve." Um. So now the four of them are talking about what's going on, trying to piece things together, and how they have to come together and get the world's greatest detectives. I don't know why Batman needs help, but apparently, so they're like, great, tonight, my place or yours? Yeah, why don't we meet at Lois's place? That would make sense. So in the background, we see a mysterious figure. Come here, Lane, you barely clean the scratch, and of course, she's super tough. She's got a bullet hole in her shoulder. She wouldn't let Batman help her. Now, Green Arrow is like, let me, let me fix this. And she's like, it's fine. We have bigger, ow. If, if it's not Talia, who's running? I hate this. You're shot. Don't be like, oh, I'm, I'm woman power. I don't need your help, men. Stupid. You got a bullet hole in you. Let Batman help you. Um, who's running a fire? Then? That is the question. Oh, get it? The question. Ow, again. And then he flees. And then you see something in the background here that looks like eyes. And then darkness. Open your eyes. And we cut to the bright. Dr. Strand, you are completely fine. You are safe. Argus, the Odyssey, are gone. They were destroyed. And for that, I'm sorry. But the ideas behind it were outstanding, and now they can bloom into the world in full. And so this is Leviathan talking to her, and he's just like, I read all your ideas. I love them. They're beautiful. You know, blah, blah, blah. He starts using her hit her words to like, and it's full on like indoctrination. And I really liked, appreciated this. I was like, wow, this is a really cool villainous thing to do, right? You got this person who's full on SJW, who's, uh, doesn't like authority, thinks. One of the things that make, I think, SJWs and hardcore progressives very, very dangerous is they don't respect the authority that they're under. 
yet they want to instill their authority over you. This is one of these type of people like, oh, I don't, they hate the rules and they, they don't help me and everything's wrong. I should be writing the rules. He's one of those type of people, which of course Leviathan is too. And he's appealing to that. And he's like, we're going to start over. Imagine a future not dictated by fear. You wrote those words. Imagine where we'd be. And she's just like, oh, it's like appealing to her. We are Leviathan. And tomorrow with your help, we won't have to imagine a better world. And as here's the credits. Um, this was a good book. It has been a while. Okay, not that long. Bendis writes occasionally a good book now and then. Now, I don't want to get too excited because Man of Steel started off really good. Um, it's hard to judge Bendis books by the very first book because his problem isn't knowing how to write. His problem isn't knowing you know, how to do dialogue or how to structure the story. His problem is in actually delivering a three-part, three-act structure plotted story with a resolution. Uh, if you watch my reviews of Superman, my biggest complaints, uh, this is also true with Young Justice, it's just a bunch of nonsense. Nothing's happening. There's really no plot. The characters don't act like themselves. Nothing is believable. It's just a bunch of hippity-hoppity nonsense uh, with sitcom dialogue meant to appeal to Big Bang Theory fans. Just like, oh, it's so quippy and funny, and they just all banter back and forth all the time, and I just love it. That's what Bendis does. In Superman, nothing happens. Where I, I, I just did a review of issue 12. Please read it um, or watch it if you can. And give me some feedback. Uh, I wasn't really happy with it, but I've gotten some positive feedback. People saying it's really good. So uh, that's not me trying to promote. Like I said, I, I was a little hesitant. I like some feedback. I'd like to hear p potentially counter to that. I don't. I, I love hearing that my videos are good. People say, "Oh, your video is really good." That's very nice, and it makes me feel good. Truly, it does. But it doesn't help me get better. Um, so, anyways. Uh, in that book, you can see all my complaints about Superman and the whole series. But this book was pretty good. I honestly took this long to get it out, the video, because uh, I started reading it and it bored me. That first page, the first couple pages, I was like, bleh. Um, and it was like late at night and I was just like, oh. And I started hearing some of the reviews come in. People were like, oh, it's dull and this and that. So I was like, oh. You know, and so it's sometimes it can be tough to get motivated to read something that you expect is going to suck. There were definitely some little complaints that I pointed out in the review. But ultimately, uh, the dialogue, all of this worked really well. I think this is Bendis' wheelhouse, right? This is where he made his name with things like the original Daredevil run, which he got like best writer of the year two years in a row, um, back when the Eisners still kind of meant something. Um, his Jessica Jones run, which people you know hold in high esteem. I think when he's dealing with the down to earth nitty gritty and just characters and you know talking talking out the mystery, He's pretty good. Like, I think the guy probably has watched every episode of CSI and Law and & Order. And he just... Because he definitely writes like he's a big TV fan. He writes like TV. Uh, not like a TV writer. He writes like a TV fan. Whatever. So this, these books, these type of things, I think you can feel more confident. I don't know where this is going to go. This could just totally go off the rails. But this first book is a solid... Um, solid effort. Um, yeah, I I would have to give this, I'm trying to think of what I would give this as a rating. I'm going to give this book, uh, I'm going to give this a cautionary four stars. Um, I don't think it's quite deserving three. I think four, it is a good book. I say this though with a caveat, if you can't stand some of the bendicisms, um, with the little snappy dialogue. This book is very light on it. It's not like Superman. It's certainly not like Young Justice or Naomi. 
but it does have it here and there and that might trigger you. <laughs> then it's like a three book. But honestly, if you kind of come into this with open eyes and open mind and you're not jaded from all the shit that he's been doing with Superman and stuff, this is a solid book. Um, so yeah, four stars. I'm going to give it uh, just barely. Barely got over the hoop, but A for effort. And um, I'll be reading the next. I'll, I'll fill you in as long as Quirks can... Uh, Keep allowing me to read his books because I'm not buying Bendis anymore. See you next time. Time for another JL8 webcomic, number 48 by Yale Stewart. Looks like the boys are back in town. Get down here, Lex. I've got something to say to you. Hmph. I can't wait to hear this. I just hope you're ready. Spank, 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 spank. You and your legion of dorks are about to get spanked. Spank, spank, spank. That is a weird thing to say. Ooh.